Hi, I'm Constance Jones. It's Friday, April 23rd, and you're watching The Six on NBC6. So new details on the missing Hollywood woman that was last seen in the area of Hollywood Broadwalk. A private investigator leading the case told NBC6 about new tips. It's believed that she could still possibly be alive. Now, it's been more than two months since the 22-year-old has last been seen. The private investigator thinks she may have struggled with her faith and may have wanted to get away from her church. She was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I get into Noemi's head, find out why she left, if she left, and find out how to reach her to get her back. Noemi had some very uh, serious inner struggles, and the struggles had to do with uh, her belief and the acceptance of her belief in, in her church. Now, the investigator also posted on the Bring Noemi Facebook page last month that she actually started a text conversation with three friends. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. Well, nine months after the disappearance of a young mother, there's an update on her case. Shannon Ryan was arrested following an FBI investigation into the disappearance of 21-year-old Leela Cabot. Ryan is a self-described witch, which has been accused of taking Cabot's two-year-old son. Well, he no longer faces federal kidnapping charges. Instead, he faces a new state charge of child neglect without great bodily harm. Whether she's alive or she's not, she's out there somewhere regardless if she's breathing or she's not she's somewhere and i feel like they need to put more effort into finding her we need we need justice we need um rest to this case well ryan remains at the broward county jail with a bond set at a hundred thousand dollars well, the Broward County School Board is expected to determine the fate of Superintendent Robert Runsey in their next meeting next week. Now, after leading the Broward County School for nearly a decade, Runsey's future with the county is now in jeopardy. Now, according to his contract, there are a couple of options that could happen here. The board could simply fire Runsey. He could resign or they could come up with a separation agreement or he could just continue to serve under the indictment. Now, his legal team says the superintendent plans to plead not guilty to felony perjury charge and he will also fully cooperate throughout the process. Well, Broward Health is now joining Jackson in suspending community vaccinations. Today will be the last day you can get a first dose of the COVID vaccine at Broward Health. Now, officials say this is due to the low demand and extensive vaccination resources now available across South Florida. But if you already have an appointment, you don't need to worry. Broward Health says they'll continue to vaccinate scheduled individuals throughout the coming weeks. Well, only in six, we are hearing from Miami Commissioner Alex Diaz de Portia. The commissioner is accused of being at a party that violated the COVID curfew and not following COVID protocols. The commissioner says the party that took place back in February he says that it was partially permitted. He showed us permits involving uh, the venue that they could sell alcohol. And although the night of the event, they were not able to produce those permits. The commissioner says that he is standing by his original statement. He says this is all because of political rival and the result of a political vendetta. The problem is that he mixes a little bit of truth with a big lie. And that there was no, nothing illegal going on there. What is illegal? It's what's happening in his district. What political vendetta? Uh, I had no idea this was going on over there. I found out uh, from the media uh, what was going on in, in Alapata. This is his district. All right, at the party, the commissioner is also accused of pushing and poking a code compliance officer, which he has denied and has not seen any police body camera footage to back that up. City manager has launched an investigation into the alleged incident. Well, the use of PPE has been a necessity since the COVID-19 pandemic started, but sadly, not everyone has been throwing them away properly. Those actions are having an impact on our oceans there, and at the beach, pollution has become the new normal. There are a number of masks washing ashore daily. Well, thanks for watching The Six. Remember, you can follow the latest news on our website at NBC6.com and also by downloading the NBC6 app. I'm Constance Jones.